particular photograph, I've removed all the covers. No breakers installed in this particular panel. But you can see the box, which is number one. You can see the eyeline bus stack, which is number three. Where number four is pointing to, you see some cutouts on the far left and right side of that mounting pan of number four. And that's actually what the breaker ratchets into with that straight blade screwdriver. And then the bolt-on connector that goes into the mounting pan actually bolts into those cutouts. If you look at number five, this is what we call a vertically mounted main breaker. That main breaker is vertical to the bus stack. In some cases, it actually plugs on to the bottom of the bus stack if it's a bottom feed. Or in other cases, it, it utilizes what we call a T-bone connector, which is a, a small busing connector that then bolts into the bus stack. With number six, you can see if this was a three-phase four-wire application, that would be where the neutral would be positioned in this panel. I kind of want you to focus on that bus stack and look directly above that vertically mounted main breaker. And you see a, a, a square red shape, and that's a glastic material. By glastic, I mean a mixture of fiberglass and plastic. And then you see a, a bolt with a, a, a Belleville washer and a nut on that right in the middle of that red square. And that's what really holds the bus stack together with those T-bone connectors that I mentioned. And then if you go upward into the bus stack, number three, you see uh, bolts and nuts periodically in that bus stack, and that's what holds the remainder of the bus stack together. We get a lot of questions through technical support that ask, can the customer go in and take that bus stack apart? And the answer is no. If they do that, it voids the warranty. That bus stack is a very intricate assembly. It has many pieces and parts to it, many little spacers and connectors within the bus stack so that we have all the proper spacing. And due to that intricacy that we, we do not allow a customer to go in and tamper with that bus stack. So, uh, if you ever get that question, the answer is no. It is uh, something that cannot be tampered by, tampered with by the customer. Move over and kind of start talking about the cover, the trim, and this is the standard cover for an eye line. This is called the four-piece trim without the door. You see the four pieces that the the dots are pointing to two pieces uh, that have the vents at the top and the bottom to allow ventilation for the, the interior and then the very narrow left and right side. And then in the middle paragraph, you see that it mentions that you can also have a door. And you can add a door to this four-piece four trim in the future, or you can order it on the original order with the door already included. And the door would be in that middle cavity that you see. It would cover up that middle area of this photograph. And so obviously, the door is going to cover up all the breakers, as it says, for public access areas. So if this panel board is located in a public access area, obviously you would not want this particular cover because the breaker handles are exposed. But if this panel board is located in the basement of the building in the gear room, and that gear room is a locked gear room in the basement of the building, then this particular cover would be perfectly fine. The four-piece trim without the door is slightly less expensive than with the door. But as I mentioned, you can always add the door in the future. And you see a photograph there at the bottom with the door already included. Just merely covers up that uh, opening or that open area there in the middle of the interior. Uh, a number of other enclosure types available. The photograph on the far right-hand side is our WP enclosure for eyeline, the weatherproof enclosure for eyeline. And notice that it still uh, carries that combination rating that we spoke of with NQ and NF, that NEMA 3R5 and 12. 
And the same stipulation applies to this WP enclosure in that if the customer is using it for a 3R application, uh, they are required to drill two weep holes in the bottom of that enclosure that allows any condensation to drip out of that enclosure if condensation builds up on the inside of the enclosure. Over there on the far left-hand side, we, we can do stainless steel, we can do fiberglass. When we went through special enclosures within Q, I mentioned with the fiberglass enclosure, we have some limitations, some restrictions to the amount of weight that a fiberglass enclosure uh, can uh, be applied to. And that specifically applies to eyeline since it is a fairly heavy product. So many of the larger eyeline interiors will not be, uh, they'll be limited to not going into a fiberglass enclosure due to the weight of that. So you would probably, for a 4X application, you would need to go with stainless steel. 